Good evening, folks. Posty has been posty has been ages and ages and ages and ages ago. Granddad, thank you very much for sending this to me. Now this is reinforced um, those uh, I've got tetrahedral dihedral things. So, Granddad, thank you very much for doing this. <clears throat> he repackaged them and reposted them back to me. Well, he made some new ones out of a three D printer because uh, the first ones I had they, they just broke. They were too spindly and weak. So what he did was he put a metal rod through them. And it's just absolutely awesome, Granddad. Thank you so much for doing this to me, man. It's, it's just for doing it to me, for doing it for me, I should say. So, thank you very much. So, Stanley, oh, you get them right in there. It's like cutting into a polystyrene brick. Well, that's exactly what it is, though. It's a polystyrene brick. So, let's get sliced in. I hope I'm not cutting any of the... any of the... Uh, the, the tetrahedral, dihedral things. Now, let me get into this. It's going to be a puzzle in itself, I think. Oh, crikey. Oh, goodness me. Oh, it's going to be a little bit of fall. Oh, no, look. Oh, goodness me, Grandad. Wow, he's packaged it really well. Look at this. Wow. Oh, I've got some spizz. Got some my Grandad cards. Excellent, Grandad. Thank you very much for that. Wow, here they are. Thank you. Look at these. Wow, now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to actually watch a video of the, um, of the chap doing this. So already I can feel they're a lot stronger than the, the other ones that came down. They were really spindly ones. But Granddad, that's awesome that you packed it. Look, in a, in a, a, a book. <laughs> wow. I'll need to keep that and use it for something else, man. I don't know what, like, but... I, mean, I, just, I think I'll just throw it down. It's getting polystyrene anyway, but... Right, the idea of these things is that they go in at an angle. <clears throat> and then when you pull them apart, they're supposed to... They're supposed to sort of move as a as a as a set of th three sets of three i think it is or maybe four sets of three i'm not quite sure but um yeah i'll need to watch the video again and see how the boy there was an amazing illusion you sort of poke them all in together um but wow it's just such a yeah definitely need to because this is just no use i mean this is just i mean that just looks pathetic but you already can feel the How tough it is compared to the. You know, it's, just a, it's an amazing design, isn't it? Tetrahedral dihedrals or something it's called. Now, Granddad somehow managed to get it together, so I'm going to have to get this together somehow as well. But yeah, as you can see, he's put metal rods down the. down them there, look. It's like a spaceship out of the expanse. We're docking. There we go, look at that. So you get these little sort of pillars. Now I'm sure one of them's got a granddad logo on it, is it? Oh no, it doesn't. That's disappointing. I thought one of them was gonna have a, a granddad logo on it. Logo. Well there we go, look at this in here. They just stand up now, which is awesome. Right, so there we are, that's them all. Yeah, so the idea is that you put them through it and seal them off at the end, and then when you pull them, they all sort of move together in union. In unions, in unions, in union, in unison. That's the word of in unison. Yeah, so there they are. Look at that. Right, so how am I going to do this? I think he's actually welded. Oh, granddad, you actually, that's brilliant, mate. Right, he's welded uh, the top onto there so they don't fall apart. That's brilliant, granddad. Thank you very much. Really appreciate all the work you, you put into this because you didn't have to do this, man. But you're such a perfectionist, granddad. That's what I like about you. You're just you're a perfectionist, man. Much better than what I am. Um, yeah, so, so, well, I'm going to have to go and watch the video because I just haven't got a clue what I'm doing here. Yeah, that's just a... Let's see if I put another one. Jag, go and watch the video. I want to solve it myself. I'm 
should go to that name one. Oh, so much stronger ground there. That's a brilliant man. What a, what a difference. You can actually maneuver them a bit now and, and play with them rather than just just snap last. Oh, here we go. What's this? Oh. It's mental. Wow. Let's put these on so the whole thing's actually sealed. It's like some weird element. Um, 3D printers are amazing, man. They really are. I mean, it's obviously going to be the future. You're going to be able to make all sorts of things with them. I think they already can. They, they make things like, you know, for body parts and things. It's absolutely tremendous what they can do with these 3D printers. Right, I'm going to have to go and look at the video, man, because this is just getting nowhere with this. Excellent fun, though. Thank you, Grandad. Thank you very much indeed. Right, good morning. Just a, a weird instant here, folks. Um, this morning when I was playing that uh, Words of Friends game, I got two Ys in my uh, in my rack. And I thought, oh, that's strange. I've never seen two Ys together for, for ages. It's like, uh, like, I remember the last time I saw two Ys and can't think of any words that have got two Ys in it. And I thought, oh, I'll probably never see that again. <clears throat> then what happened this morning? A car and family had a registration. Why, why, something. You know, the, I thought, oh, my God, there's another two Ys together. Now, how weird is that? I haven't seen two Ys together ever. And then it happens twice in like the period of an hour. Very strange indeed. Too wise to be. Too wise not to be. There's more mayhem here, folks. Look at this car sticking out. Oh dear, oh dear. Look at this. Wow. All sorts of. Oh dear, oh dear. Lots of tuning going on. My goodness me. Is that car there? <coughs> that one. You're the bad boy, you are the bad boy. Wow. Oh dear, he wasn't happy, was he? Right, we're clear, they're all gonna leave now. All right, folks, now, we're checking on the uh, the bomber and fledging situation. I'm not sure, I thought I saw a tail sticking out, but I think the fledgings will have gone by now, surely. So I'll come down the path here and try and antagonize Bomber, see if he's up there. Bomber! Mate! I think he's gone, man, you know that? Yeah, normally his head would be sticking out by now, give me some... He was some antagonism, but he doesn't seem to be there, no. So I think the, the fledgings have gone, but I was laughing at a bro the other day, he was saying, uh, you can hear a couple of the, the young fledgings, the noise they make, that's all, woo, woo, as they're walking around, that sort of plaintive, woo, woo. that's uh, not as good as bro did it, but he said that, that noise is uh, is the soundtrack in our broth at the moment. He said it's driving in bananas. <laughs> yeah, how I laughed at that. I felt sorry for him. He said it's driving in crazy. Just oh look, I mean look at this seagull crap down there. Look, there's never normally crap there. No, yeah, it's definitely gone, man. I think they they've upped upped feathers and they're away. Anyway, there we go. So I'm off tonight. And what we're gonna be doing? What are we gonna do? Well, who knows? I'm quite, I, I went to the shop there to get a battery for that condenser mic that Frankie had, because <coughs> I left it on. Uh, so it's run out of power and uh, I need it back on again. So I went on with it, but it's £5.25 for a, a, a Duracell Energizer. So I thought I'll get a, a cheaper battery than that somewhere. So, uh, uh, yeah, so tonight for tea we've got fillet, fillet steak. Get in, fillet, the best bit of steak. This is the beer of choice tonight. Brewdog Pale Ale. 
4.2, yeah. There we go. Cheers, folks. Oh, it's a good fillet steak, fillet steak. I'm making fillet steak. What does it take to make fillet steak? I don't know, but I'm making fillet steak. Oh, fillet steak, fillet steak. I'm cooking fillet steak. What does it take to make fillet steak? Oh, I don't know, but I'm cooking fillet steak. Now, when cooking fillet seagull, I mean fillet steaks, right? You always need a heavy, a heavy based, a heavy bottomed pan is what I'm trying to say. So there we go. This is the, the heavy bottom pan. It's really got a nice thick bottom on it, so uh, it, it gives the oil time to heat up nice and slow. So it doesn't. If you have a thin base pan, it just burns too quick, and uh, the, the heavy base pan just lets heat build up slowly, and then you can just throw the steak on it. It's going to sizzle just very nicely there. So. Uh, I'm going to chop up some onions and mushies as well. I've got loads of onions here. I've got them and got them. I've got loads of onions, man, but I'm just going to use one. I've got some potatoes for Rosie. I'm going to have chips. I'm going to turn the oven on right now. And here's a great tip. Cooking mush, uh, chopping mushrooms. Look at this. <laughs> Always wash your mushrooms first, of course. Go for a world record of six, six mushies in a row. Can he do it? Can he cut six in a row? I think the knife's too small, but it looks it's looking good. He's done it. He's done it. Yes, dear, it's all under control. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. You want any veggies yet? Well, mushrooms, onions, and vegetables. Yeah. Well, that's vegetables, eh? No, thank you. Leave the kitchen, please. Can you cook? No. Can you play the bass guitar? No. Can you sing? No. Then leave the studio, please. Leave the studio. I'm cooking your steak rare. It's going to be bloody and red in the middle. No. Yes, I'm going to make you sick. Oh, that's really good, Rosie. Well done. Getting the forks and knives. That's really helpful. Thank you.
the pepper sauce, this is what I use. I like to I pour the, the cream, the double cream gets poured into this, a thin base pan so the heat comes through and just cooks it very quickly indeed. So just be careful of that. It goes down there. And what I'm using then is a mixture of um, ground pepper, already ground, so it says you're the grind. So, but you want to put some of this in as well, just some of the ground pepper, just to, to give it a bit of spice, because the peppercorns, when they crack open, they give it a spice. So here we go with the uh, with pepper. Um, depends on how you like it. I like mine nice and peppery, obviously, because I like pepper. Um, but uh, so here we've got, I've got the, the fillet steaks just ready there, just ready to, you guys have already been peppered, so yeah, excellent. Oh man, chunks of steak, oh they look good. Okay, right, here we go with the pepper. Oh, that's a fair bit in there, okay. Right, now it's just a waiting game, got to wait for the potatoes to uh, boil and just be ready, the chips in the, the oven. Uh, I'm going to put the steaks on. The steaks only take maybe about what six or seven minutes. Rosie likes hers incinerated, basically. So, and I like mine with just a thin bit of uh, red running through it. <clears throat> so uh, we'll get the, the the pan on the the heat just very shortly. You get the the uh, the steaks seared on the edges, cook them, and then leave them to rest for about maybe three or four minutes as well, just to let all the the juice drip out of them. Um, or just, I don't know, just, it's a muscle, it's a muscle basically, isn't it? That chunk of meat, so once you've cooked it, it's, it's quite distressed and like, oh, tight. So you just let it rest for a I minute mean, just to relax itself again. That's why you, you rest the, uh, I've got to rest this uh, final bit of lager here. Ah, oh, it's been rested. Bit of cream. I always have a little bit of a nibble, I've had a wee slice of bread, I've had a mushroom, I've had a wee wipe of a the cream, you just can't help yourself. You shouldn't really do that though, because it takes your appetite away before you start. But once you're cooking, you just can't help yourself. Well, I can't. Right, folks, that's the steaks in. The steaks are in, the steaks are high because we've got to get this right. <clears throat> got the sauce on as well, right in the corner here. The sauce has just got a low heat because you don't want that cream up too soon. Quite a difficult thing to do, the uh, the pepper sauce, because you've just got to make sure it's all right, and you've got to make sure it's peppery as well. You don't want to be too wimpy, you need a bit of a kick in it. But sometimes I put a bit of mustard in it. Honestly, folks, I burn my arm. That one came out till tomorrow on the oven there. A chip fell off the chip pan, so I tried to put it in there. Oh, and I got a blast in my face as well. Jeez. Right, I better pay attention to the, uh, the steaks. Right, folks, oh my goodness me, that was so good. The steak was cooked to perfection. Roses were just lovely. Mine just had a thin bit of red through it. The pepper sauce just had enough oomph to it. And the mushrooms and the onions were perfect. The chips were just lovely and crispy. Just good to dip in the sauce and crunch into. Oh, just wonderful, man. So a very, very good tea. The fillet steak, lovely, delicious. It is, it is the best bit of steak you can get. Normally used to say sirloin was good, but you know, when you get a good bit of fillet, man, oh, it's so good. And uh, so for tea tonight, it's going to get a definite 9 out of 10 on the ometer. Um, maybe we could have done with a corner of the com, actually. It just made it lovely just to finish off and wipe up the remains of the sauce. The only bad thing is, folks, we've got loads of dishes to do. Um, so normally he who cooks doesn't have to do the dishes, but for some reason, because I cooked, I have to do the dishes as well. That's the, the woman's variation of the rule. So, cheers, folks. Chink, chink. And I'll see you in the next episode of Jack Lives. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you.